Hello, my name is Caitlin Smith. This is my informative speech on basic the basics of photography, and it is June 27th. When thinking of photography, I like to think of a bowl of cereal. I have dry cereal in a bowl, and I'm going to call this my ISO. It's good as it is, but we can make it better by adding some milk, and we'll call this our aperture. So I now have a completed bowl of cereal, but I have no way to eat it. So we'll mix in our spoon. We'll call our spoon our shutter speed. So by combining all of these elements, we have the perfect bowl of cereal or the perfect picture. Cameras can be complicated and frustrating. When I started photography, I only used the automatic features and while the pictures were coming out good, it wasn't the vision I was seeing. So then I decided to go to the manual, but because I didn't understand what the, basic were, the basics were, the pictures would come out blurry, too bright, or just completely out of focus. The famous Ansel Adams once said, you don't take a photograph, you make it. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. In digital photography, everything has to do with light. First up is the ISO. It's the first thing I'm going to set based on where and when I'm shooting. ISO is the sensitivity of your camera's sensor. The higher the number, the more sensitive to light your camera is going to be. The lower the number, the less sensitive it will be. You may think, let's set the ISO high because I want all the light, but that's normally where most mess up. Because the higher the ISO, the more noise or grain you're going to see, so you want to keep that ISO as low as possible. To show some examples, I took some photos of the same object with the ISO going higher and higher in each photo. We have ISO set at 100, 400, 1600, 6400, and 25600. So at 6400 you can see that your picture is kind of starting to look like it's out of focus and you're getting some like dots in the background. And then at 25600 you see that it is almost completely out of focus but even though your picture it's not out of focus but because of all the grain it looks like it's out of focus. So, say I was outside and had plenty of light, I would keep my ISO around 100. Now, if I was indoors, I would probably bump it up to 400, but it all depends on how much light you have outside of your camera. Remember, ISO is your camera's sensor sensitivity. The higher the ISO, the more light, but also the more noise, so keep your ISO low. Next up is aperture. This is the size of the opening in your lens. Your lens has doors or blades inside that open and close to create a smaller or larger hole. The size of the hole is your aperture. This one can get a little tricky to remember because the smaller the number, the bigger the hole and the more light can pass through. And the higher the number, the smaller the hole and the less light will come through. You'll see this number as F stops, so F36 would be a tiny hole and f3.5 would be a bigger hole. Aperture mainly controls your depth of field. Depth of field is basically how much you want in focus or how little. It mainly or how little you want in focus. It's going to get tricky again so the lower the f-stop number the less that is in focus or the smaller depth of field. The bigger the number the more that is in focus or the larger depth of field. So we're going to go back to the same object we had earlier and put some objects behind it to show the depth of field. We have f4.5 and as you can see right here, the background is barely in focus. It's fuzzy compared to what you have right here and what you are focusing on. So when you get to 6.3, it's still kind of the same. 
and then you get to A.0 and it's gotten a little bit darker and it's a little the background is a little bit more in focus but then the edges aren't as crispy as you want them to be so then you get to F11 and it has gotten darker so you need to fix your shutter speed and your ISO to kind of even that out but the background is completely in focus it's crisp it's nice you can see everything as a whole last up is your shutter speed your shutter speed is the amount of time measured in seconds that your shutter is open with shutter speed you'll see numbers like 1 50th of a second 1 100th of a second 1 250th of a second and so on or you can go backwards and slow your shutter speed down to one second two seconds or five seconds and so on while shutter speed controls how long your shutter is open it also controls motion blur from a lot of motion blur to where an object that is in motion is just completely frozen in place when shooting to get motion blur it's always better to use a tripod because any movement will be captured and sometimes it's not the movement you want if you want to get a frozen movement, then you can go off the tripod or stay on it. It is your preference. Faster shutter speeds are mostly used in sports or when you want to take pictures of children or animals playing and you want to get a frozen picture of it. Slower shutter speeds get you those cool wispy effects like making a waterfall look like a silky blanket. So for instance, right here we have our fast shutter speed where it looks like what you would see with your eye. The water is flowy, you know, it's normal. Well, then with a slower shutter speed, the water almost turns into bl like a blanket, like a silky blanket, and you get that wispy effect. Now to put it all together, I'm going to evaluate my scene to set my ISO. If I'm outdoors and there's plenty of light, I'm going to bring that ISO as low as I can. Second, I'm going to look at my subject. I'm going to choose how much depth of field or aperture, how many people or objects do I have in my shot, and I will set it based on that. And third, I'm going to choose how much motion blur I want or don't want and set my shutter speed based on that. So I put together a little overview. So the higher the ISO, the more light and more grain you're going to have. The lower the ISO, the less light, but no grain. With your aperture, your aperture is the size of lens opening. The lower the f-stop equals more light. The higher the f-stop equals less light. Aperture controls depth of field. So your low f-stop is going to be small depth of field. Your high f-stop is going to be a large depth of field. With shutter speed, the slower your shutter speed, the more motion that you'll see. The faster the shutter speed is going to be less motion or it's going to be frozen. Thank you.